Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to represent almost complete binary tree using one dimensional array. If you need to represent almost complete binary tree, then you just don't need to build a binary tree in the traditional way. You just need one dimensional array to represent this whole almost complete binary tree. Let me show you the trick there. In order to do that, what we need is to number each node of this almost complete binary tree starting from one for the root node. And we need to increase this number by one for each node level by level left to right as I'm writing on the screen. So this B is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven, eight for C and nine for this. Now, if you number each of these nodes in this way, level by level in increasing order, left to right, starting with one for the root node, then it, it turns out as for any node with a uh, number I, you'll find the left child at 2 times i and you'll find the right child at 2 times i plus 1. For example, for this node x, you're having this number as 4 and you're having its left child at 8, that's actually 2 times 4 and you're having the right child at 9, that's actually 2 times 4 plus 1 and this is true for any of the nodes. Now, we can find the parent as well for any node with a number k. Uh, you can find its sibling at k plus 1, right? If I consider that the k is the left child, then obviously k plus 1 is the right child. Then obviously we can find the parent at k divided by 2. We'll take the floor value or by k plus 1 divided by 2. Now for this node 9, you see that 9 divided by 2 is 4.5, but we are taking the floor value, so it turns out as 4. So for any node with a number k, we can find its parent just by dividing it with 2 and we'll take the floor value and we get the parents index. Now considering these numbers as the index of the array, we can map each of the content of the node in one dimensional array. Let me show you that. Now this R will go to the index 1 of this array. We'll place this A to the index 2 of this array. So what we are doing, we are using those numbers as the index for the array and we are mapping the content of node in those index. So 3 gets B and we assign X here, Y, Z, W, C and D. We are going to sacrifice this 0th element. We are not going to use that and that's not, not going to be considered as wasted, isn't it? Because for any number of elements there in the almost complete binary tree, we are going to sacrifice only one element that's not dependent on N. So you can see that for this R, if you want to find out the left child of this R, then you can easily do that because the index of this is 1 and we can find out its left child at 2 times 1. So this is the left child of R and 2 times 1 plus 1, that's 3. This is the right child of R. So for any node X, you can find its left child at 2 times 4, that's 8. So C is the left child of X. Yes, it is. And if I add 1 with that 2 times 4, I get D, a right child of X. For this Y, we don't have any left child because 5 times 2 is 10 and we don't have 10 there in this array. So total number of elements are 9, so we cannot have an element there at index 10. So we easily detect that it doesn't have any left child. So for this 3, the left child is at 6, right? Now for the 7, if we want to find out the parent, we can divide this 7 by 2 and we get the floor value as 3. So the parent of 7 is at 3, right? So in this way, we can find out the left child of a node or the right child or on given a number, we can easily find out the parent. Now, for example, if you are given 1 you can and you, you want to find out the parent of this R, then 1 divided by 2 is 0 and 0 doesn't contain anything. So it doesn't have the parent. So this is obviously the root node. The index 1 is the root of the whole tree right? So that's how we can represent uh, almost complete binary tree using one dimensional array. So the thing turns out as if we go ahead and insert the elements in one dimensional array, one after another, starting from the index one, then obviously we are practically inserting in almost complete binary tree, isn't it? Let me show you that. Say we are assigning X here at index one, at index two, we are assigning Y and here we are assigning Z. Then uh, we are practically building almost complete binary tree. You can see that for X is the number one, for Y it's two, for Z is three. Right, now if I go ahead and 
right? Or assign W there at index 4, we are practically assigning it to the left of uh, Y. Uh, that's having the number W, right? So if we want to insert one more number at index I, uh, index 5, I'm sorry, then it's actually at index 5 and that's I, right? To the right of this Y. So if you go ahead and insert the values one after another in one dimensional array starting from index one, you are practically inserting in almost complete binary tree. So that's how we can represent almost complete binary tree using one dimensional array. I hope you have understood this clearly and we are going to use this trick in order to represent heap since heap is an almost complete binary tree. So we can easily represent heap using one dimensional array and we can find out the left and the right child of any node and also we can find out the parent of any node. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to formally define heap and I'm going to make you understand the basics of heap in the next tutorial. And then after that, we are going to understand the algorithms for heap insertion and heap deletion. Thank you very much for watching this.